the hero prince of climate kick. Welcome to Eco Summit. Yeah, thank you. A yeah. great organization doing a lot of good work for hundreds of startups all around Europe. Yeah, correct. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Hero Prince. Uh, there's my uh, presentation. Um, <coughs> and thank you very much for inviting me to, to this uh, conference, to this Eco Summit. Um, because I think that gives me also the opportunity to explain a bit more about uh, Climate Kick, but also to show that we appreciate what you do, Jan. Uh, because what we do, maybe I have to tell a bit more about my background. Um, I study, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, and I'm, I'm studying there ecology. And to make a big step there, we are working with Climate Kick to build on an ecosystem. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm, as ecologist, I'm, I'm, I'm really like what, what, what we do now in building an ecosystem with investors, with academia, with industry, and as a result of that, uh, create green growth. So how we do that, and, and uh, I will explain in, the, uh, in my presentation. Uh, it's, it's good to know that, that background. Um, and I, I think I also personally feel inspired uh, um, about um, that what Barroso says here is that I think it was around 28 that when he became president of, of the European Committee, that he he had the the notion of uh, why are other continents developing much faster? Where are there much more uh, startups? Why is there much more innovation going on in other parts of the world? Um, and there was an understanding that we need how to make uh, Europe more innovative and competitive. And uh, that was actually a, a fundamental thing. Why, um, upon where the European Institute for Innovation and Technology is developed. And uh, the great thing about that, that European Institute for Innovation and Technology, is that it's not just somewhere a single building. Somewhere in Europe, after uh, a lot of negotiations and years, there was the idea, well, we have great academia, we have great industry, uh, why not try to bring them uh, together? And um, what is, uh, and the result of that are the, 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 the so-called KICs, the knowledge innovation communities. And that sounds a bit abstract, but we'll come to why we do what we do. Um, but it is rooted in uh, the idea that we should make Europe a, a better place for innovators and, 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 and entrepreneurs. Um, there are more. Kicks more uh, knowledge innovation communities, and one of them is related to the societal challenge of climate change, to address climate change. There is also a kick in energy, there is also an ICT Labs, and there will be a kick on um, <coughs> renewable uh, resources, and there will also be a kick on, on health, and maybe in the future even for food or smart cities. So this is a kind of vehicle in the innovation landscape in Europe that is here to stay. Uh, and Climate Kick is one of the first uh, examples of that. And what we address is uh, that we want to have innovators and entrepreneurs in, for instance, developing the bioeconomy. Or uh, that's on the mitigation side, also industrial symbiosis, uh, smart cities or uh, sustainable cities, I must say. And on the other hand, we work on the climate adaptation. Uh, what innovations are needed for uh, long periods of drought or floodings, uh, what kind of agriculture adaptation is required. And this all creates a huge amount for, for innovators and, and, and entrepreneurs. So <coughs> I come back. Uh, maybe in this audience, Climate Kick is known because it is an accelerator. It, it's not an accelerator. That is maybe that you know here that it's an accelerator, but it's only, to be precise, 90.5% of the total. Uh, a lot of the, 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 the budget that we have available uh, goes into education. We start very early now. The, the masters and even also PhDs, uh, they are, have a sort of T-shaped uh, model that we have adopted, that they are very good in their science in science as scientific aspects, but also have this broader development that they can become an innovator or an entrepreneur. So that starts already quite early. I'm 48. When I did my study in my technical university, there was no idea that we should ever become an entrepreneur and learn about business modeling 
or uh, uh, business plans or whatever. So it is, uh, I think there's a new generation that we want to, to raise across Europe uh, by this program. Uh, the innovation may be a bit uh, a default one to bring academia and industry together on this challenging uh, uh, targets we have to, to f with, with the climate change. And where I'm uh, directing is the entrepreneurship program, and in particular, the, uh, we developed an accelerator. Um, and I think most of you know Steve Blank uh, with his uh, Lean Launchpad. Um, or I would say our Lean Launchpad, because we, we are fully adapted to this methodology, and we really like it. But there, w w one definition is, uh, comes across my mind every time, is that a startup is a temporary organization for development and testing business models for a potential new product. And that is, if you have the European framework, that is actually quite exciting, because it is, for most of the academia, uh, rather new that you, if you want to have the knowledge to business, then in your uh, design of, of national and European programs for innovation, which are floating around, that you have a, a, a substantial amount uh, reserved for, for, for startups, just to speed up uh, the, 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 the time to market between academia and, and business. Um, and of course, uh, you're all quite aware of it, but, uh, but a lot of professors in the academia are not. Uh, around 1995, 1995, I think there was almost 2% of the uh, students of the technical university that were considering to become a founder of a startup. Um, and nowadays, in lots of technical universities, it's, it's at least 25%. And also the word entrepreneur um, across Europe, also here, is uh, an entrepreneur was a sort of almost an inferior uh, 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 title for, especially in the, in the academia, professors that were working on startups or earning money with, with, with their, that was at least in, in a lot of sectors that was uh, uh, quite inferior. And we see a lot of change here now when we do polls at uh, the universities, technical universities, that there is a huge amount of, of the new generation that wants to be a startup. Um, that people that have the by default the motivation not to to uh, to find a job that my generation had actually when we studied, but uh, want to create a job. So, as in this whole European program, uh, we thought, okay, how, how can we shape this into an ecosystem? Where is the help needed? So that's why we we developed a, a startup accelerator. Uh, that's why we want to engage with the investor community um, and step by step develop an open innovation ecosystem uh, between the academics and the industry where startups and SME play a very important role in the, uh, yeah, the, the transfer from academic knowledge in a, in a very speedy way to, to the economy. Um, we also have our accelerator model. Uh, I will not go into too much detail. I think quite a few uh, are aware of it. Uh, we have a stage, stage, uh, uh, three stages approach. Um, and yeah, we are selecting, especially in the beginning, on, on climate relevance. That makes, uh, that's a differentiator, I think, uh, from a lot of other more general tech uh, accelerators and incubators. Uh, but things on team, business model, uh, momentum that was mentioned, or time to market, or scalability, I think are quite regular criteria. Uh, and also the steps we do are uh, very related to the, uh, the, the, the Lean Launchpad methodology and other methodologies that are in, in common use nowadays. Um, we work um, in a distributed model. Um, I'm the director. We're in, in uh, six uh, countries, or six CLCs, I would say. There is, uh, you can apply for the program, and there are also now building up regions, like in Poland and Hungary, Italy and Spain as well. Uh, we build up an ex the, this uh, accelerator program. Uh, we don't invest too much in incubator uh, space, but more in the real acceleration, the business coaching, and engaging the, the young startups to uh, investors. 
Um, it's built on a lot of practices. Um, I think most of you uh, will be aware of uh, this kind of methodology, but it's great to see um, that also in the, in the scene of accelerators and incubators, there are still a lot of experiences and, and, and learnings how to be the best accelerator. And I think that's good that there is a lot of competition, what is most effective and what kind of business models. Even the accelerators are, uh, have different business modeling and, uh, and are testing how to get revenues out of it. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, does it help? Um, I think so far so good. Uh, we have uh, accepted uh, 300 startups across Europe in our program. Uh, I think it's we uh, about 20% of uh, the applicants are uh, coming to these in our accelerator, and there it's uh, yeah there's a stage one two three. We're quite tough. The uh, all startups have to reapply for the next round, um, and uh, we are quite selective there. Uh, survival rate is good, but okay, we are just uh, two years uh, on the road here. Um, and now, uh, last year, 2014, 2013, we see first results that there is a lot of yeah, uh, private investment now uh, um, interested in the, uh, yeah, in the startups we, uh, we train. Uh, we map the job growth, because uh, you can imagine, because it's, it's, it's a European uh, program, uh, it's not directly in our KPIs, but every time I present it somewhere in Europe, they are very interested in the, in the job growth now, but also the predictions uh, on the future. All right, this was my presentation so far. I'm one minute over time. Uh, and this is always also an introduction to three of the Climate Kick startups that we'll uh, pitch uh, after this uh, introduction to uh, Climate Kick. So I give the word back to you, Jan. Um, I'm happy to. Uh, answer questions if there are any questions, but also I will be uh, available afterwards if people have questions about this uh, program. Thank you. Thank you, Hilo. <laughs> many, many German startups have been supported by you. Correct. I, and and um, one is Tado. It's one of your favorite case studies. Correct. Munich-based company, and they raised 10 million. Are they included in the 59 million number? Yeah. Yeah. Ten out of that is so if you have a couple from, of from Taro. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, they're quite active in the UK at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have been here at the Eco Summit last year too. Yeah. 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 Do you have a question for Hero? He's a here a real hero. Uh, <laughs> Startup yes. hero, we call you now. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, you mentioned ninety percent survival rate, and it's better than emergency room of any hospital. And it's just how do we measure survival? Because 90% for startups, it's something unbelievable. Uh, yes, out of the 300, 90% uh, still exist. Yeah, but w what do you consider survival? So they, you you don't shut them down, or they get second round, or they get or they go come to break even, or um, um, well, see, the, the the team is still working to make uh, something out of their startup. That is, uh, they're still there. They, uh, some of them are just uh, break up because they tested the business model and it didn't work out. So 10% um, has stopped, mm -hmm. and 90% is still working to to make it into a success. But the other way to look at it is, the jury is still out on the 90% because they may exist for a very long future. Some will maybe get out of business, but yeah. for the couple of years. Yeah. Two or three years that you are tracking now, it's a very okay. high number. We, we do uh, an, an annual survey. So in January, we do uh, another round of a survey. Also, then we uh, do an inventory on the, on the jobs. Uh, like the investments, we, we track actually on a monthly basis. But um, the, the, the number of jobs, for instance, and if they still are alive, that we do it every, every year. So these, these numbers will, uh, yeah, these graphics will be longer. Uh, Ilian? Congratulations on the good work, and we backed one of the companies coming out of it, so we can see the effect. Yeah. I'm wondering, in your model, how do you ensure that you don't compete with uh, private uh, VC or private, privately funded accelerators? And on the contrary, how, do you, uh, how is your model designed to uh, leverage? Yeah, uh, I think good, good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, because it's taxpayers' money, it should never compete with private. 
money. So that's a, that's the assumption, uh, and that's 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 that, that's the statement. And I think that is, um, of course, there is a, is a the, the value of that, and there is a uh, market failure. And what we think with this program that the, that the, that the number of of uh, uh, PhDs, for instance, that consider to become a startup and even grow into a successful startup, will will grow very fast, and that that will also uh, become role models, and that over time uh, there is an ecosystem and an infrastructure and, and and investors around and and, and reinvesting things mm -hmm. um, that it, that maybe the taxpayers' money should be less and less active. So it's it's, it's sort of seed money. For building an ecosystem, and I mean, uh, interestingly, up to now you are not taking equity in your accelerator, right? Not now, it's grand, I, I but you are thinking about it. Correct. Can I you tell us already more, or is it a secret? <laughs> um, no, I think it's a, it's a healthy step. That I think we are, we are considering, and maybe we prepare in 2015 that, for instance, for the stage three, we make it a big large, a bit, big bigger, yeah, and then uh, do a convertible note to a certain extent, yeah. Uh, Um, yeah, but that is in order also to, uh, to to get money back because we have limited funding, so that we can play our catalyzing role in also in longer term. Yeah. And and uh, most probably you will become a happy co-investor, right? Not trying to to fund a startup on your own because then clearly it would yeah. be competing. Yeah. But if you look at it from a co-investing point of view, remember the panel that we never had yesterday. <laughs> but um, okay. but if, um, if 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 it's about co-investing, then it's actually working together, right? Yeah. And it but then we want yeah. to. We are also working on, on maybe creating a fund. But then we are the catalyst to bring the fund together and create a label and maybe double it with, for instance, the European Investment Fund or uh, other uh, opportunities. Uh, but then we are the catalyzer and not uh, a partner. But for example, um, in Berlin and, and probably in the Netherlands, if you have a startup in your accelerator program, they don't have to come to the TU Delft incubator and sit there. You are more flexible when it comes to where are they based, or do you have yeah. a strict rule? Yeah, we, we select not on location. That is not in our criteria. Yeah. We select on uh, the, the high potential. On quality. Yeah. So it could be, and, and, and did you have um, um, cases in the past where, for example, you have a Rockstart accelerated startup, they went through the Rockstar program and then they come to you afterwards, or maybe even the other way around. Yeah, the other way they around. They start a yeah. climate kick, they, they, then they go into yeah, the Rockstar or Eco Machines uh, they should, It's a bit also like follow the money, and, and if, if they need it, uh, yeah, they, they are entrepreneurs, and if they, it, it helps to develop that, they, they can do that. Yeah. They're open to do that. Yeah. All right. Talk more about it afterwards, right? Thank right. you very much, Ivo. Okay. Thank Continue. You. Thank you. Yep.